Today we're going to use water to show how a candle can make a vacuum. Let's get into that. Hey everyone, my name is Kelvin and I'm here at the Australian National University in our science teaching building. We're going to start off with observing how a candle works and then we're going to get into the crux of things and look at how we can create a vacuum using a candle. For this experiment, we'll need a candle a tray with some water, you can use any tray like a uh, plate, a beaker or a cup, a preferably glass, and some food colouring, which is optional. And we also need some matches to light the candles. For the first part of the experiment, we'll start off with the candle only. We will make observations of how the candle burns. A candle is a simple way to produce light and heat, but observations will help us understand how it works. So using some matches with teacher or parent supervision, we'll first Light the candle. So as it burns, take note of the color, uh, what the wax does, uh, any smells, and any sounds. So now as the candle burns, we see that it produces a bright orange flame just on top of the pool of wax. Some of you might think that the flame is produced by the ionization of air. We call this form plasma. But in fact, the candle burns at a much lower temperature, around 1500 degrees that's not hot enough to ionize the air. The orange flame is produced by incomplete combustion of some products of the wax, uh, for example, soot. It burns orange because it's a lot cooler than flames such as from your Bunsen burner, which burns blue and clear. A second question to consider is how does the candle burn? You can see that for this candle, the wick is still preserved, whereas there's a pool of wax around it. As a candle burns, it doesn't really burn the wick. It instead heats up the wax so it becomes a vapor. And then that vapor is what combusts with oxygen around you. That then produces carbon dioxide and water vapor. For the second part of the experiment, we'll make some more observations. But this time, we'll do it on top of water. So I'm going to place the candle carefully over our tray of water. Now we're going to drop some food coloring into the water. This is an optional step, but it will help us observe the behavior of the water bell. So now I'm going to stir the food coloring around and we're going to place the beaker over. Observe as we do this. One thing I noticed was that as the candle went out, the water was drawn up. This means that there was a lower pressure inside the beaker than outside, which allows the water to be pushed up against gravity. And we can see that as I try to lift the beaker, there's some resistance, meaning that a vacuum is formed inside. Why is this the case? As we heard earlier, when a candle burns, the combustion reaction occurs between the oxygen and the wax vapor. However, after combustion, only carbon dioxide is produced, meaning that there's less volume of gas inside. This produces a vacuum that draws the water out. Now we're going to modify the experiment a little. So I'm going to light a new candle. Be careful as you do this. I'm going to place it gently back into our green water. Remember in the first part, we used a larger beaker. We're now going to switch to a smaller one. I'm now going to place the beaker over our burning candle. And as you can see, when the candle goes out, the water level rises again. But how high does it rise this time? I can also see that the candle has risen and is now floating on top of the water. So why is that the case? The candle is made of paraffin wax, which is much lighter than water. So as more water is drawn up, it can float the candle above the tray. So now as we play around with different ways we can observe the candle burning, maybe have a think about different ideas you can do. How about use a different candle or a larger wick? Does it make the candle burn longer? or does it make the water draw, draw up higher? What about the temperature of the water? Maybe try using cold water or boiling hot water and see what happens. So go out there and have fun trying different experiments.